Um, so this one's almost idiot-proof portable Android app testing. I tried this about a year ago, and uh, I tried to roll my own that worked with, uh, the idea is to have it work with games also, uh, but rolling my own we ran into issues of, you know, is it ARM or x86, and can I get compatibility issues, and I'll, I'll go over that, but um, that, that kind of how it is combinated. So we're going to do a first question. Uh, what game does the little Android in in front uh, remind you of here? Fallout. Fallout. I heard it over here Space somewhere. Invaders. Fallout. Crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool crap. Whatever. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Fallout Four. That's Fallout. Yeah, that's the football game. Um. So the problem here is uh, testing mobile applications is like a, apparently a magical unicorn kind of still to some people, um, myself included in some cases. Um, and then we have the, the, the old style lollipop type of bytecode, and then we have this new art, which I haven't even looked at yet, which is for the lollipop platform. So uh, kind of the bytecode around the assembly language, but for the Android device. Um, so that kind of complicates things because it's not your standard x86 uh, shenanigans. Um, then you also have the issue of the application itself trying to do everything over SSL, and sometimes you can't capture that traffic easily and requires some shenanigans and, and the man in the middle of action going on there. Um, and in most cases, you need root on the device to actually have access to, to, to be able to do these type of hooks, right? Um, another thing is hardware cost. Um, you know, you want to buy the latest and greatest iWho, and you want to buy the latest and greatest Android device, and it's going to cost a fair amount of money. Um, and then just trying to figure out the architecture. Is it ARM, ARM HF, x86? Do you want to do the Haxium? We'll talk about that, that the, the, the speeds, the actual uh, the, the emulation. So if you have an Intel, you can, you can make it a little bit quicker instead of emulating the whole ARM setup. And uh, some examples, if any of you have had the unfortunate uh, time to work with any of these, BlueStacks, NDOS, Motion, anybody? Play with these, horrible. Jelly beans, yeah. the jar of beans, or whatever that piece of crap is, that is all garbage. Um, that wouldn't even install that stuff. Um, n n what I'm going to show you is better, but I'm not sure yet. So, um, yeah, don't ever install BlueStacks. Um, I'm not sure about Andy OS. I haven't really done an evaluation on that one. Um, I know Guinea Motion is a pile of crap, yeah. whatever you pronounce it. It's faster than um, So, uh, what's the main difference between Kit Kat and Lollipop? Kind of mentioned it before. Um, kind of. Delvic to art. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to come up here, grab something, whatever you want. Um, so that's the main difference. Is once we crossed over from KitKat, um, it broke all my shenanigans because it's a different architecture. So a lot of the stuff doesn't hook well. Um, so what are we gonna get? Um, got the original goal again. Um, I kind of wanted to use the existing Android SDK and this, their system images to create a, you know, an easy to use portable Android testing thing. Tried this about six months to a year ago, and I ran into all these roadblocks with build prop and all that mess, and I kind of gave up. And then I tried it again here, but then the last few weeks when I was asked to talk, and uh, spent another six hours wasting time. So um, that's kind of hard. Then uh, wanted it to be using this Haxium, Intel Haxium thing, which if you don't know, there's emulating the ARM architecture inside of your computer, and that's relatively slow. And if you have an Intel processor, and I think it, there's actually speed, uh, speed hacks for the AMD platform over x86, but I haven't experimented with that yet. But if you have Intel architecture, this out of the box has the Haxium thing that makes it all ridiculously fast. Um, and the, the other was I wanted it to be simple, portable. You know, all you got to do is have a box that's Windows and it's got 64 bit. You're good to go. Uh, Intel architecture, you're good. Um, I wanted to also include common ar common applications that you needed for uh, generally testing an app or just kind of poking around with it um, on uh, on the actual phone itself. And I'll I'll show you some of those. But, uh, how many how many? Apple, Apple people here. Raise hands. Apples. Don't be shy. I, I'd have one if I wanted to have one too, but you know, I don't. I'm, I'm not a manager, and yet I don't have any. 
I don't need an actual phone to call people with. I just have an Android, right? Um, how many Android people in the room here? Okay, you're all poor. Great. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the common tool set I wanted to have in there that off the top of my head I dumped in there. And then uh, this whole build prop stuff, which essentially the build prop file in Android tells the Play Store and other Google uh, Google apps what your phone is, right? Um, the idea there being is for compatibility issues, so if I don't want to support a giant, you know, huge, you know, video platform for, for a giant display, then I can say only do phones this big, right? Because my engine's a pile of crap and I don't want to, you know, run crappy on a giant Android device. So, build prop is still kind of weird. Um, and there's, there's extra DLLs that some of these softwares, like uh, the BlueStacks and stuff, somehow they hook extra stuff in to make the video work, make games work a little bit better. Um, I haven't quite figured it all out. Um, so we got another question here. Who here has the most cell phones on them? More than, how, how many you got? Uh, the tablets count? Um, Do they have no. to be in the room? It, it would have to be a cellular phone and you have to have it on you. So oh, show me what you I got. Three back in my room. Yeah, an actual phone that can make calls, so. No, I have three back. You got, you got three in your room? No, you gotta have them on you. Okay. For it to count. How many you got in the bag? Just all me. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll do it. Go, go for it. Yeah. You get you get extra credit for it all being Android, right? So yeah, I went over the original goal. Just make it easy because this whole, kind of this whole emulation is kind of shrouded in mystery for myself at least. Um, so the first project I ran into actually just a week ago was this uh, Android x86 project, which is pretty idiot proof. Um, they, give, they give, provide the source for you. They give you an ISO file, or uh, I think it's a bootable ELF or something that you can put on a USB stick, and you boot off that U USB stick, and you have an x86 uh, Android uh, emulator going right off the bat. Um, it pretty almost idiot proof, um, and what I notice is that games don't work. And my my fascination with games is not necessarily to play the stupid things; it's to break them or do research on them, um, and the idea being there is that you, if you can find a vulnerability within these games that make ridiculous amounts of money, like the Supercell guys, they like, it's their own protocol, it's like not SSL, it's like this weird protocol that goes, I don't even know. Um, so if you can figure out how a game works that has, you know, in-app purchases, whatever, the freemium garbage, you can pretty much figure out any corporate application and, and poke holes in it, right? So that's the fascination with games, is to make it fun and kind of interesting and, and you can kind of go from there once you got a corporate app. But uh, let's see, we've got another one here. Talk pretty fast. If anybody has any questions, feel free to raise your hand. Um, this is kind of, you know, moderate to, to more complicated shenanigans. So I don't quite understand all myself. So if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and, and ask if I haven't covered something basic because I put most of this together about four hours. The second one I ran into, which has recently been released, is this called this Nox app player. Um, this thing's awesome. It's like blue stacks, except for it's not a pile of garbage, and it seems to not be off the, on the surface, not doing anything it shouldn't be doing. Um, it does phone home, I'm assuming for kind of compatibility issues. So the idea being that um, I'm thinking possibly that the, the apps that are in here that are their Knox apps help with compatibility and if there's a patch for some kind of app that they know will break Knox or will break some functionality then maybe they can alert the user or something like that. So I have not evaluated the software. So we have a definitely idiot proof. It's like a 500 meg based on VMware from what I could tell. Um, or VirtualBox, I'm sorry, very sorry. Uh, based on VirtualBox. So it comes with this you know, 550 meg executable, you run it, and it comes with two disks, and they're kind of how it all works through VMware or VirtualBox, and it hooks all these DLLs, and does all, you can't just, from what I can tell, you can't just take the uh, VirtualBox image that Knox creates, and just load it up in your own uh, VirtualBox, at least not yet that I could tell, so. 
Um, split stacks, not horrible um, when you have root access. So I'm sitting here trying to root the thing and I can't figure out how to get root access. So I'm poking with it, poking with it, and I get root and I restart and I keep losing my root when I restart and it has this great little button here that says like, get me root on. I'm like, oh. oh, okay. So I'm like looking at the system and rerouting the system and like making everything read only and like trying to lock it down so it can't delete the file and I reboot and it disappears. I'm like, what the hell? But uh, yeah, that's how you get root. You just go click, click, root. Um, a lot of the like blue stacks, they won't give you root because they don't want you poking with their shenanigans and reversing that and releasing your own. So um, you get ADB out of the box. It's a special Knox underscore ADB executable, which somehow hooks something different than the normal ADB. I'm not quite sure how it works yet. And games work. And when I say games, at least the ones I've been poking around with. So um, it's pretty idiot proof. It's got you know everything you would want and more outside of BlueStacks. So uh, the, the only drawback here is that it seems to originate from China um, and it's kind of new to the market and I, there's not a whole lot of research into what the company is, what they do, what they sell. Um, there's no like donate button, there's no buy button, it just exists and it's free. So something free that works good. The, the triangle doesn't work there, right? So something's going on. I just we just don't know what's going on there, right? So they might put in a pricing model later, which I don't hope they don't, you know, stomp on it. But the idea there is just keep an eye out on this whole process. Let's see. You've got a question here. APK, APK files are basically what kind of file? Zip, zips, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to grab some. <coughs> It's got clock radio in there, it's pretty cool. It's really easy to set the alarm. And but my wife wouldn't let me replace the one we have already. She's like, we already have one. I'm like, well, I like this one. No, we're using ours, okay. And uh, puzzles and, what are the little mini CD-ROMs? 80 millimeter CD-ROMs? Do you guys remember those? Yeah. There's a bunch of blank, blank uh, with some poop disks in there or something ridiculous when people still had CD-ROMs in their computers. So yeah, we got the setup. Um, I do have an ARM version for, it was built, that I built, and, but it's really slow and it doesn't use the Intel speed up stuff. So I'm not really gonna try to release that because it's just not ready yet. And even if it was ready, it's really slow. So we ended up with uh, Knox, uh, for simplicity's reasons for now at least. Uh, so the setup here is, you know, we have a 64 bit, uh, Intel tested only, so far at least. Um, and it has a built-in Java, which sets all the path variables, so you don't have to install Java on your computer. Um, and it comes with a verb suite jar built in there. And then uh, it, it's already activated with Google and all that garbage with a, with a trash account. So um, when you spin it up, you don't have to do any authentication or anything. You just turn on the VM, and Knox already has everything logged in. You can do whatever you want. Um, so, this is a couple screenshots here. The first one is a FS cert installer. Um, if you've ever had the joy of trying to install a certificate on either an Android or a, a Apple device, it could be different depending on what's going on. So this one for Android at least makes it pretty easy. It's from uh, Foundstone. Um, so you put the, the URL in here and you put the port of your proxy server in this case, uh, Burp Suite. And then you put the port and the, the IP, which in this case, it's all natted. For whatever reason, Knox has three interfaces on it. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, one of which is this 10.0.2.2 uh, route interface. So I'm telling Burp Suite to go to this address, which is the host machine that's running a net three network cards for whatever reason. So this always stays the same. It's like uh, 10.0.2.3.4. I don't know why it needs three interfaces, but whatever. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, this is the show in the, the actually four, it looks like. ETH1, ETH0, ETH2, and ETH1 again? What? That's weird. Yeah, it shows the same one twice. I don't understand. Oh, it's a different route. It's a routing table. Anyways, um, that shows the different uh, interfaces. And I just, instead of putting in my actual interface for Burp Suite, the, my actual wireless card, 
Um, I just use the default route for the host, and that way it just works. You guys don't have to set anything. So that's the, the, biggest, the biggest part for uh, all this is getting the green yeses across the board when you click the install site certificate. Um, that ensures that everything's going through Burp Suite, you're getting SSL traffic, well, you're getting at least most of SSL traffic, and everything is, is set up the way it's supposed to. See another question. Hmm. What type of databases does Android use locally? SQLite. SQLite, yeah. Grab some stickers and oh, that's just, it's just it's just interesting over there. All right. Uh, again, here's kind of a couple screenshots of how the setup is. Um, uh, the what I'll start out with Burp Suite is I just reset Burp Suite to the to the defaults, and then uh, you go under the the proxy tab and set it to all interfaces. It's just don't even worry about it. You can change it later for security reasons, uh, but just set it up for now. Just use all inter interfaces, and that way you you can ensure that the Knox player can talk to the host machine's uh, Burp Suite or whatever proxy you want to use. You just want to ensure that the traffic from the VM can get to this guy. Um, and here's a screenshot of ProxyDroid, which once you have the certificate installed, ProxyDroid will essentially automate the process of setting the proxy server, basically. And so instead of having to set the proxy server inside of Android, um, you can set a ProxyDroid, and it will hook uh, through IP tables or whatever. Linux uses IP, just IP, I think. Um, it'll hook that and forward all the traffic through to Burp Suite. And you can also do weird stuff like uh, tunnel DNS, so you can send a DNS quest over through the, the proxy. Uh, the main main settings you already here are the host port and then proxy type HTTP. Um, that's generally how I have it set up. And then you hit the on button and hopefully it doesn't, doesn't freeze on you. Um, let's see. Um, I generally keep Interceptor turned off so it, I don't get confused because Interceptor will, will pause um, any any request that's sent through the proxy. So you start up an app inside of the, the VM and you're like, what? Well, it's not working. And then you realize that you have Interceptor turned on and it's just sitting there waiting and crapping out. Um, keep an eye on the SSL, make, make, keep an eye on Burp Suite when you run an app and make sure you can see HTTP and HTTPS. So if you're only seeing HTTP after turning on ProxyDroid, you know that something's up with the cert or there's some other shenanigans going on, the app's doing like SSL pinning or something, something strange like that. All right, so no more questions, I don't think. Um, here's some more kind of tools that are built into, that are already installed. We have Lucky Patcher. You have to play with that, it's pretty fun. I'll show you that. Um, titanium Backup. It gives you a quick peek at kind of an explorer for the APK, and we'll show you like what databases are in there. You can kind of look around. Um, SQLite uh, Database Editor. There's a bunch of free ones out there. Um, I haven't really evaluated, I had an old one, which I couldn't really get to do what I wanted it to do. Um, but the newer ones seem a little bit more idiot-proof. Um, of course, Burp Suite for inspecting traffic or whichever proxy you want to use. And then uh, Expose Framework, which is pretty interesting. It allows, what I understand, active hooking of an APK or an application live. So instead of having to do your hacks, go in, change the line, do whatever, you can write a module that says, okay, find this when you go to this instruction do a no-op and then return back without having to actually modify the original APK. So they have tons of plugins um, for all kinds of different applications like YouTube to block ads or anything. There's all kinds of fun stuff in there. Then we have your essential uh, cheat engine, but for Android to do memory address lookups. So if you're in a game or in an application and you see a value and you can go look up that in the memory and modify it and wait for the game to crash or the back end to throw you out and kick you or whatever it is. So uh, it's called Game Hacker. It's so-so. Eh, um, again, China application, so beware. Um, <coughs> I 
and pretty much we're going to roll into a demo. Um, the link there I'll give you guys later. It's got all the notes and everything you need to, to get it set up. But uh, I'll roll into a demo here for some, give you some examples of some of the stuff we played with. The old eagle. Sorry if this is anybody's, if this is anybody's pattern, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> you know there's only like four patterns out of everybody else's possible combinations. Uh, let's bring up, uh, that's going, got Burp Sweet going, and now we <clears throat> sacrifice something for the demo gods, why not? Try to do this one handed. I probably won't try to do it one handed. <coughs> if you hold your jaw just right. All right, so what we have here is Knox running, and then we have Burp Suite running in the background. And again, you'll see, where is my mouse? Excuse me, you'll see turning intercept off. We verified that uh, this is listening on all the interfaces, so I don't have any issues with, you know, it not actually being able to, to uh, listen on the port that needs to. This is also kind of a crash course in, in Burp Suite. Then we got Nox Player with root enabled, the magical setting up in here. You turn the root on. It's got some other, you know, settings in here. You can essentially change your not, uh, IMIE number, all kinds of interesting, fun stuff to play around with. So here's our proxy droid, which does <laughs> makes makes it easy setting up proxy for Android. Um, you need root and pretty much those fields host, port, and then your proxy type. Hit the magical on button. And we should start seeing ET phone home here. Actually, I have to do something. No. Oh, look, garbly goop. So it's like, okay, who's this? Talkingdata.net. Hmm. This looks like some, I don't know, what, binary blobs? I don't know. This might be legit partners, or this might be China. Who knows? <laughs> um, so one of the local uh, things I found is uh, I was playing around with uh, pinball application. This was a couple of years ago. Um, this is to show kind of how some apps operate and are kind of easier or harder to uh, poke around with. Uh, essentially went in and, no, I essentially went in and ch modded 777, the whole folder with anything with the database, which you don't want to do on a real phone. And that's the thing with this, this setup is that I've had to do engagements where I've done, had to do mobile testing and I'm sitting here on my personal hardware, like poking around with stuff and, and like, you know, essentially opening up all kinds of security risks and breaking my phone, right? So we're gonna open up some databases. This is the SQLite kind of explorer editor. And we're gonna go, we remember, again, this was a, a pinball application which had all this payment stuff built into it. Um, so we go into the databases and this is the structure of most uh, APKs. You'll have a databases folder where most of the time it's only, it's usually like vendor uh, uh, ad shenanigans where where it's at in the ad and what its unique ID is and who you are. And, um, I've assessed applications that do uh, geolocation and it's supposed to be with when you're inside 
wherever it is, but depending on the local application, even though the local application knows that it's outside of where the map is for the you know, park or theme park or whatever, it still sent back home. It still phoned home and said, this is where the person is. I'm like, well, okay, so if the purpose of your app is to help people while they're on site find you know, a shopping center or bag of chips or whatever, why are you still sending back the geolocation data when I'm in my house? Like, so it's the whole, we collect everything and every, nothing gets deleted. And anybody that tells you they delete stuff is lying. So we have databases folder in here and this pinball arcade DB has some interesting tables in it. Um, we have a table that says purchased. We can go in here and I think view fields, data. Oh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> so the way the older version, the newer version, somehow mitigated this uh, this type of vulnerability. Um, so we have a database in here that essentially says what we've purchased, right? Um, pack two, pack five, and season pack pro, and whatever all these are, is just a database field. So the idea is that you add whatever the code is, you figure out what code it is, uh, look it through the, the assembly, or just poke it around. Um, and set it to one and say, oh, I purchased everything. And next time you, you install the app, or next time you load the app up, it says, hey, you know, let me download all this stuff you paid for. Um, and again, I don't condone any of this type of activity. It's merely to try and figure out how the app works, um, understand how applications work, and then use that uh, where I work and, and poking with uh, Android stuff. So that's a good example of kind of a local attack or local vulnerability. <clears throat> Some other low hanging fruit for uh, applications is Lucky Patcher. Um, and Lucky Patcher has stuff like YouTube ads found and you can open up a menu of patches and you can like do custom patches for removing the default Google ads hook. So if you write an application and you use the Google AdSense framework for your app, um, Lucky Patcher can do things like hook that and say, oh, instead of making the banner this size, let's just make it one pixel or no pixels. So the idea there being, you know, it's to help block ads. We have, uh, what else do we have any fun stuff in here? Um, license verification. Now, in most cases, if it's a pay, um, in this example, the Pirate Kings app or any of the, the pay for play type of games, uh, the license verification disabling stuff generally doesn't work because they use their own embedded code and write their own, roll their own, you know, verification platform or use somebody else's that actually can be e easily disabled. So it has a lot of fun stuff in here. You can back up the APK, you can modify it. Um, some really fun stuff that will usually just crash the app. <laughs> uh, you have a where is it? You can disable certain parts of the the hooks. Mm, yeah. So this essentially shows what the application has access to, um, what calls, like kind of the, like the API calls. And from what I can tell, uh, I think some of like uh, some of them you can tell the difference the color coding if they're like custom or if they're like built-in Android ones. So I think that's kind of how the color code is set up. But generally speaking, the idea is, you, um, the idea was that you go into an app like Facebook and disable all this stuff that has to do with privacy and launch the app and it just crashes. But um, you can you can experiment with how the calls work. Um, the, the ideal is to go in there uh, with some kind of tool like uh, back smally to decompile it, find out where the code is. Um, I didn't mention the uh, really good tool for that is called uh, Virtuous 10 Studio for um, anything cat co uh, KitKat. It makes it all pretty idiot proof. So you put in the AP, you plug in your phone, and you're like, what app do you want to pull down? And it pulls it down, it decompiles it for you, and you can do scans and search. And you can say when you're done, hit OK, and it'll automatically push it back to the phone and do all kinds of cool stuff. So um, that's a pretty good setup. Um, but that was one game I'll show you quick where we at. Yeah, we got plenty of time. So, uh, so this, I was at uh, 
my wife's parents' house, and her niece was playing this game, whatever. And we should see some HTTPS going through. And you, you'd be surprised, even just doing like a logcat and searching for HTTP. So ADB logcat will show you what uh, the debug information is for the application. So you set it up all the way and kind of log anything that says like .com or HTTP. You'll see a surprising amount of like identification information going across the wire of what you are, what your OS build is, what your unique ID is, things like that so they can track you or whatever they do. So we got some traffic from the app sitting in here. And this is essentially one of those, you can only play the game so much per day. You get 50 spins or whatever. Um, and the other thing has got to be that, you know, you're out of spins, you can send me a dollar, right? Um, so of course the first thing you try to do is give myself unlimited spins. Um, so when you spin, you get some cool little animations here. And uh, I could have done sound, oh man, it's not too late. No, I'm fine. So uh, we'll go down here and we'll find some posts. And it, it, you know, the, the, this stuff isn't magical. It's basically web apps at the end of the day. Unless it's got a custom protocol built into it, a lot of this stuff is JSON, XML, or just a simple post request. So here we're looking at, um, we access this API with this unique number here, which I think is some kind of timestamp, which they fix. They fix this. They actually require this now. Um, and then we have, uh, I, I'm spinning the wheel, and then this is like your authentication, your special, your ID within the game. So I click the spin wheel and we got a response back from the server, which a lot of this stuff, if you're any good, it's all server-based. So um, Supercell stuff is all server-based. So even if you did find a vulnerability within a game or an application, um, these guys will essentially snapshot your profile and anybody else involved with the vulnerability and snapshot them back to where you were at or just ban you straight out. So we have all the uh, information about our spin. You know, we have like our rank and like some people that, some variables in here. But the important ones are spins 49 because we started out with 50, right? Oh, let's change the spins 49 back to 50 and see what happens. No, it doesn't work out. Because again, it's all, a lot of these variables are all server side. So we said um, some other information I tried to poke around with. Um, try, the, the idea is to kind of do replay attacks, um, replaying uh, spins and seeing if you can get something. Let's show the screenshot of uh, the Pirates game I was poking around with. <coughs> this is the, the Pirates game that came out three or four years ago. And this was one that was not server-based. Um, so you, you download the app, it's the freemium game, and you go around and you click on stuff and you type, it's pretty fun. And I played it for about a week and then I said, okay, let's poke with it. Um, it ended up being, uh, I pick up a treasure chest and I said, oh, let's try to replay that request. It's all HTTPS or HTTP at the time. And I said, okay, let's try to replay that, um, that picking up that treasure chest and see if we can pick up the treasure chest twice, right? Um, no, it said, no, <laughs> invalid ID, whatever. Okay, well, let's add a one to it. Um, no, invalid, oh, let's subtract one. Maybe add some other, no, 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 okay, okay. So I kept poking around with at the post side of it. <coughs> and then uh, not realizing what I was looking at, I looked at the request in, and every time you did anything in the game, the server sent back your stats so that the phone app could update whatever your stats were. And I said, no, it can't be this easy, right? So I went in there and said, replace anything that had a value assigned to it and put a 999 in front of it. And then I hit go. And then this is what I got back on the next screenshot. I was like, uh-oh. And there's things, it has the, you know, pay for gems or whatever. So that was kind of interesting. And I had, you know, 9999 gems. And I took about 20 minutes or maybe an hour to get banned. And the, the account got banned. <laughs> but the great thing is, is you can just generate a new ID and do whatever you want. So 
But this is a classic example of not doing the server side, storing everything server side. If you allow the client to update the app, then you know you're going to get stuff like this. Um, and what I'm assuming, just like Supercell, they have some kind of anomaly detection that says, okay, if this person's value goes above X, Y, Z, or somehow they can look for anomalies and just ban people based on pushing or anomalies. So that was a little, little fun with that. But yeah, we spin the wheel a few times, and you know we click around, and different actions happen. Like if you spin the wheel, you can eventually you'll get like where you can actually do something besides spin the wheel. Um, sometimes you can pick up extra, extra spins. So I said, oh well, let's try to tell the server when I, I can see see can I pick up an extra spin more than once? No, I won't let you do any of that. So this is one of like attacking. So we can come down here and say. One of our latest posts probably has it, yeah. So instead of spin wheel, it says attack steel. Um, so essentially probably, it's about a few months ago, I wrote a, I just wrote a curl script that you put in your ID and it plays the game for you. So it automatically does the spins. If it, you get an attack, it'll automatically attack. And it, there's like a once a day thing. And then there's like a once a week thing you can do. And it just automates all that. And it worked for like two months and then mysteriously, they quit working and they started, uh, I think that code is all the same, except for this key is now required. You used to have, you used to could just not put this in and it would work. Like it wasn't a required field. I think this is some kind of timestamp or maybe something on the server end that has to do with, so the idea would be to go through all the post requests and try to figure out what this is. Um, but I think it's some kind of timestamp or I don't know, hopefully it's something not server side, right? That you can, you can putz around with. Um, let's see. Yeah, we got a few minutes. <laughs> Say what? Almost a million dollars. Almost a bazillion. Yeah. Uh, this one is not my. It might be my other account. No, I had a bunch of islands and everything. So I got up to. I got you know kind of midway before the script quit working and uh, I gave up on it. But uh, let's see. I'll show you some other fun stuff. Um, yeah, this this by far is the best set I've ever had for any kind of uh, emulation. And if you were smart, you could actually take the take the VMDKs and load them up anywhere. Is the idea? Um, you probably have video issues and probably crash at first, but you have to figure out how it's loading. Um, let's see what else we got. Any shenanigans I can show you? We'll go back to that. Uh... So while I'm poking around with this, somebody try and think of an app that's not server based that we can just look at the traffic on and that we won't be potentially sued for um so let's see um so this is a, the explore option inside of titanium backup and it tells you the database files and like different uh, where the file where what kind of the structure of the, the apk and how it sits. You'll see these all the share preferences file, which I think that's rad stuff. I don't know. Um, that's kind of interesting for kind of debugging issues. And the ADB uh, logcat is also great for debugging um, and figuring out what the application is doing. You'd be surprised how many apps like just cat out the password in the debug log. That's why you never want to leave the debug mode on your phone. Um, because you can do all kinds of really bad things um, if you're able to connect to it. And I keep clicking stuff. So let's see if I had any apps in here to play. We already rolled out Clash of Clans, but uh, let's see. Yeah, and the whole super user thing is a pain, I'm trying to figure out which version of which binary is on the, the actual app. Uh, here's one of the exposed modules where it'll say hide, 
hide ads that works for exposed and it natively hooks the APK again instead of having an actual install it, it, it hooks it. So let's go on the Play Store and just what's around. All right, what do we want to do? Applications or games? Applications. Applications, okay. Apps, I guess that's just apps, right? <coughs> New and updated apps. We don't want updated apps. We want popular apps. Updates means that they fix stuff, right? <laughs> we don't want that. Recommended for you. What are you recommending for me? Good. Oh. Yeah, well, based on all the data that I've given them with this shenanigans account. So let's, let's look at most popular. Eh. My child ate the little nipple off of the, the the middle nipple off of the keyboard. I'm like, where's the? And I look at him. He's like, Duh. <laughs> and of course, when I try to book, put it back on there, and it's all stretched out, screwed up. So I'm gonna go to IT and be like, I need a bag full of these little nipples because my child's gonna probably eat the next one too. All right. So what do we got here? We got some Y man free Wi-Fi. That sounds. That's got no malware in it. Um, dub smash. What is that? Uh, the weather channel. I used to do support for those guys. So, cutie patootie welcome town. We want to do this one. What do we want? What do we want? Cutie patootie welcome town or wireless something or other. My man, free Wi-Fi. Cutie patootie or my man free Wi Fi? I can't decide either. Y'all are about half and half. What are you gonna do, cutie patootie? What? I don't know what that means. Don't count for review your account to continue installing apps on the What the heck? No, we're not gonna add a credit card. Um, there's also uh, local app stores for Android and iOS where it hooks the API calls and it says, you know, any of the in-game purchases or if the app comes up and says blah, 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 and it forwards you off to a local app store and it's like, uh, hooks it and says, okay, you've paid for this and then sends the data back to the app saying that you paid for it, even though it's all at the local app store. Um, there's lots of ways around it. Any decent app will work with that nowadays. A lot of them are built in. Cool. Well, if this will ever finish, I can show you some other shenanigans. But even just browsing around or just having Burp Suite open, we can see all kinds of really weird stuff, like, um, like talk, talkingdata.net. I don't know who that is. What is this? Oh, that's not, well, no, the user agent is not spilled. So they're actually sending a custom user agent tag, which is interesting. So. Out of, the, out of the box, we know at least um, they're able to track uh, the build, uh, the build uh, kernel, and the build, and uh, what version of, looks like what version of Nox it's built on. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, oh no, I broke it. Ah, boo. One million downloads. But yeah, I mean, a lot of these will just send back ad crap. Um, you know, that's why Supercell makes like, what is it, like a 1.4 million a day or something and they have a 50 employees? Is because, you know, if everybody sends you a dollar, you're rich. So uh, a lot of these just have simple banners in them. Um, and there's the whole flashlight app issue of multiple people having uh, multiple flashlight apps having adware in them or malware send contact information, which privacy is dead anyway, so who cares? Does anybody have any questions about my random ramblings? What you got? Uh, Burp Suite and Knox, uh, what OSs are they available for? Uh, Knox, like I said, Knox, you might could get to work cross-platform if you were so inclined because it is a VirtualBox uh, VMDK. Um, if you take the VMDKs and try to load them up in Windows, at least it just crashes and says, "Uh." Oh. So what I'm thinking, it has a, its own fancy 
portable virtual box. Um, it's one of these, it might be this player. The player is actually in here as a binary. I think it's one of these two. I think it's that, but yeah. And then it has all this QT stuff in there. I think this is for video. So somehow it's hooking all these DLLs for VirtualBox and making it just everything just work. So and Burp Suite? Burp Suite's just Java. Um, you can any cross platform. But uh, Nox is going to be Windows unless you can figure out how to hack for it. Um, it's relatively new, so we might see some stuff drop saying, here's how you do it in Linux. Boom, boom, boom. Install this, these three libraries, or run it in Wine, or whatever. Um, but yes, yeah, as, as far as I can tell, just first suites straight up, uh, straight up Java, and uh, Nox is it's, uh, Windows. So I, I generally try to keep everything Windows dependent, not because I like it, because it makes it portable, and anybody can just pick it up and run this binary and hope for the best is the idea. So, any other questions or anybody want anything else? One here. Does not support GPS, like spoofing? GPS spoofing, yeah, actually. There was a little tab in there It says, like, I want to put in my, the, they have apps for that, if you want to fake your GPS, fake but GPS. yeah. It's got a fake GPS thing built into it, in the outside of the GUI, so. Uh, maybe through ADB commands or API, it's able to just use this as an interface, and then when you hit enter, it hooks the API and says where you are. But uh, there's apps for for GPS making all kinds of stuff. So, anybody else? No? No? All right. Well, uh, feel free to meet up with me if if you want some help on building this. Um, I know this guy Bob might have a place to download it from, but uh, it's pretty good, we're good to go.